welcome back to living with quarter acquire syndrome so today i am going to be talking about traveling with ces and hopefully the things that i've come up with help anybody in um in a situation where they don't think they can travel when in reality you can you just need to obviously do a lot of preparation it's not as simple as you know not having quarter aquinas syndrome and then just you know booking a flight or getting in a car it's not as simple as that anymore for people with ces um we do have to prepare so the pre preparations um that i've come up with so obviously um your medication so making sure you have enough medication to last you your duration of um your traveling so say if you're going on holiday for two weeks you take two weeks worth of medication with you i would always take just that little bit extra with you just in case you you know you misplace some obviously if you are um self capitalization um, making sure you have enough cafeters to obviously last you your duration of, of your trip. Incontinence pads as well. Adult nappies if you are if you are obviously using them. Um, compression socks they do come in, come in handy. Um, for obviously when you are flying. Back support. Um, so a back brace. Um, support pillows also um, you've got things like a uh, seat belt extenders if you're flying now a lot of airlines do provide seat belt, seat belt extenders but you can buy them on Amazon just to stop the embarrassment and the explaining and things like that when you are on board a uh, on board an airplane, always check with the um, airline before you fly, um, if you are able to <clears throat> use your own seat belt like seat belt extender, or if they provide their own. So obviously things around um, the the time of travelling as well. So you've always got to prepare for the distance and how far you're going to travel. How long the journey will be. Are you able to stop during that journey? So if you're traveling, obviously, um, by a car, coach, things like that. Um, are you able to obviously walk on the airplane? So if you're flying, are you able to walk up and down the aisle? Um, stretching as well, especially if we're traveling in the car, on train, coach, tram, thing like, things like that. Always plan your route as well. That 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 is that is a very, 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 very big thing. Always plan your route so you know exactly where you're going. <clears throat> obviously um when you are planning your routes plan it around toilets so where the nearest some um, public bathroom in, is to where you are using disabled toilets as well um here in the uk and um, people that suffer incontinence we do have a disabled card for bladder and bowel urgency so always make sure you've got that with you as well. If you don't have one, just pop it into Google. Um, I will put a picture up of what, what it looks like. Um, just pop it into Google. It's free of charge and they will send it you in the post. And then you just, whenever you need need to use the toilet, because um, a lot of places, they are a bit iffy for uh, non-customers to be able to use their, use their bathrooms. So always just show the card. Um, a lot of companies here in the UK do recognise this card. So you just show it. You don't have to explain anything. Just show it and then 
they will give you the nod and to be able to use the restroom if it's in a restaurant, cafe, bar, something like that. <clears throat> okay, so for emergencies whilst you are travelling, so you always need to know where your nearest hospital is. Um, obviously whilst en route and at your destination. If you are um, one of these sufferers that um, obviously has to use AIDS, so always make sure you know if you're if you're one like one one of us that uses crutches or a walking walking stick, a wheelchair, a Zimmer frame, all these things. Make sure you do have have, have your AIDS with you only if it's going going to be needed, obviously. The main thing as well that I that I personally think think everybody should do is especially if you are flying, always seek medical advice and always ask for a letter. So if you go and see obviously your um your GP or your consultant and you say, Am I fit to fly? And if they say, yes, you're fit to fly, then you need a letter stating you are fit to fly. Um, the, this is for the airlines, obviously. Make sure you always get the right travel insurance as well. So ones that um, supports um, spinal cord injuries. Always talk to, obviously, the airlines as well before you fly. See if there's anything they, they can assist you with and help you with during your flight and after your flight coming off the plane and obviously going onto the plane. Now, this is obviously for here in, obviously in the UK, anywhere else that anywhere who else is watching. Hiring cars. Um, make sure if you're going to hire a car, especially at your destination make sure it's always always adapted to your needs especially if you're the driver the only time if you're going to be traveling by train the only time you need to let the train companies know if you are a wheelchair user you don't have to let them know if you're a spinal cord injured person you just need to let them know if you're using a wheelchair or not If you're traveling alone, make sure you tell someone like your next of kin, your emergency contact, just in case if anything goes wrong the other end or in between. Now, especially with flying, um, luggage, make sure you always declare your medication or any adaptations you have with you. That also includes your incontinence products and your catheters. Also, if you're going to be needing help with your luggage as well at the airport, obviously, and at the other end, if you're going to be needing help with that. So all these things you can discuss before you you travel. You can discuss this with physiotherapy, your consultant, your GP. And obviously on support groups as well on Facebook, you can obviously ask questions about what other people do to prepare for travelling. <clears throat> So this is just a little video about traveling with CES. If there's anything that I haven't covered regarding traveling and if you have any questions, any queries, please put a comment down below.
and I can try and help and advise as much as I can. Um, I've not done a lot of travelling since um since I was diagnosed with um, CES. Um, so I can only advise and help as much as I possibly can. I hope this has helped people know how to prepare. Obviously, it's best if you if you obviously write write notes on how you're going to prepare for your traveling <clears throat> as well. Like I did here, I writ everything. Um, so if there's anything else that anybody has any queries or questions about, please put a comment below. Remember to like and subscribe to this channel. Um, I am working with the Quarter Aquina Foundation in the US of A. So this is going to be helping, obviously, advocate for CES. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time. And there's just one last thing I'd like to say. And that is hope 